Hey guys, so today I'm going to read you chapter one of Tabby in the Tub. Mandy Hope and James Hunter cycled out of Welford Village. Daffodils nodded in the spring sunshine as they passed. I've got a biology test today, Mandy groaned. I have looked over it for two hours last night and I still haven't learned it. Mandy knew that if she wanted to be a vet, then she had to do well in school, but she hated studying for tests. There were always so many other things that she would rather be doing, like looking after the animals that came into Animal Ark, her parents' veterinary practice. You'll do fine, James, her best friend, reassured her. They approached the last row of houses. Race you up the hill, he called. Not waiting for Mandy's answer, he put his head down, his brown hair flopping over his face, and started to pedal like mad. That's not fair, Mandy protested, pedaling furiously after him. As James sped past the first house, Mandy's sharp eyes noticed a cat coming out of one of the cottage gates just ahead of him. It was a white Persian cat, a very pregnant white Persian cat who was heading straight towards the road. James's eyes were looking down as he tried to make the most of his head start. James, Mandy yelled, look out. The cat stepped out, her head held high. Her large cumbersome body swayed as she walked. Stop, Mandy cried in horror. At the very last moment, James saw the cat. He jammed on his brakes and his bike skewed violently to one side, missing the cat by inches. James and the bike crashed to the ground. Mandy screeched to a halt and flung her bike onto the pavement. She raced over to the cat and scooped her up. Was she all right? Were there any signs of shock? The cat's rough tongue flicked over Mandy's hand and she rubbed her head against Mandy's chin. She wasn't hurt just rather surprised at having such an unexpected cuddle. Oh, thank goodness, Mandy whispered, hugging her close. Suddenly, she remembered James and looked across the road. He was gingerly disentangling himself from his bike. Are you all right? Mandy asked, hurrying over. I think so, said James, pushing his glasses firmly back onto his nose. He looked anxiously at the cat in Mandy's arms. How is she? Okay, I think, Mandy said, stroking the cat's soft white fur. It's Delilah. You know, she belongs to Mr. Ward. James nodded and stroked the cat's head. Bill Ward was the village mailman. They often passed him doing his rounds on their way to school. He brought her in to Animal Ark a couple weeks ago for a checkup on her pregnancy, Mandy said. Delilah looked up at her and purred. When are her kittens due, James asked, wheeling his bike off the road. In about two weeks, I think, said Mandy. She looked around at the row of the pretty gray stone cottages that nestled together with sloping roofs and a tiny windows. We can't leave her out here. Shall we see if Mrs. Ward is in? Which house is it? James asked. Mandy nodded towards a cottage near the end of the row, the one with the pink cherry tree in the yard. Each of the cottages had a front yard bordered by a shrubbery hedge. James pushed open the wooden gate that led into the ward's yard. The spring breeze sent fluffy pieces of pale pink cherry blossoms swirling around Mandy's head. Two terracotta pots stood by the front door, purple and white pansies spilling out of them. James reached the door and knocked loudly. A dog barked inside and they heard footsteps approaching. Back, Tara, a voice inside. And Jane Ward, the mailman's wife, opened the door. She was dressed in jeans and a sweatshirt. A black and tan dog, about the size of a small Labrador, attempted to wriggle past her, but she caught its collar quickly. Steady, Tara. As she caught sight of Delilah in Mandy's arms, her inquiring look changed to one of surprise. Delilah, how did you get outside? We found her crossing the road, Mandy explained. I almost ran her over, admitted James, rather shamefaced. But we think she's all right, said Mandy quickly, seeing a look of concern across Mrs. Ward's face. James didn't touch her. I must have forgotten to lock the cat door, flat groaned Jane, running a hand through her curly blonde hair. Thank you so much for bringing her back in. I've been trying to keep her in the house unless I'm outside to keep an eye on her. Her road sense has been terrible since she got pregnant. Tara, the dog, was still struggling to greet Mandy and James. Giving up the battle, Jane released her hold on the collar and Tara boundfully bounded out joyfully. James grabbed her just in time to stop her from jumping up at Mandy and Delilah. Whoa, Tara! The dog licked his face and hands ecstatically. She was an Australian cattle dog, square-shaped, strong, and sturdy, with a head a bit like a German shepherd's. James and Mandy had first met Tara when she was just a few months old, 
and the wards had bought her to keep Delilah company. Her heavy tail thwacked against James' leg. She's as lively as always, said James with a grin. James smiled and took Delilah from Mandy. It's certainly quite a job keeping an eye on both of them. She put Delilah down inside as the cat stalked slowly toward the kitchen. I don't know what I'm going to do with Delilah. She's never been good with traffic, but she's been ten times worse since she's been pregnant. Just like Duchess, said Mandy, remembering she got hit by a car when she was pregnant. Duchess was Delilah's mother. The accident had caused her to go into premature labor. Luckily, both Duchess and her kittens had survived. She belonged to Richard Tanner, one of Mandy's and James's friends in the village. James let Tara go, and the happy dog bounced over to Mandy to say hello. Mandy made a fuss over her and received a lick on the nose. Mandy grinned and scratched Tara's ears. How are you going to like the kittens, Tara? Jane raised her eyebrows. Well, I hope she's going to get along with, along fine with them, but we'll keep her away from them at first, at least until they're old enough to cope with her bounciness. We were going to ask your dad about the best way to introduce them. Bill's planning to bring Delilah to the clinic for another checkup tonight. Oh, good, said Mandy, straightening up and looking pleased. I'll see her then. Jane nodded. And you both must come and see the kittens when they are born. It's good for kittens to have visitors, she smiled. Anyway, I better let you two get off to school or you'll be late. Thanks again, she called to Tara the dog bounded happily inside. Mandy and James turned back down the path and the door shut behind them. Well, that turned out all right, said James, relieved. Now I've just got to see if my bike's still working. Mandy nodded, but she was only half listening. A slight movement in the hedge caught her eye. What was it? It looked like an animal. She frowned. Earth to Mandy, said James, waving a hand in front of her face. Mandy brushed him away and stopped. Look, she said in a low voice, over there in the hedge. It's a cat. James frowned. Where? I can't see anything. There, Mandy insisted, pointing. James peered at the hedge. A short-haired tabby cat was lying watching them. Her brown and black fur blended in perfectly with the shadows. Her ears twitched warily. Her sleek, round body was tense. Mandy held out her hand and approached quietly. Here, puss, that's a good cat. She wondered what the cat was doing in the ward's yard and why she looked so nervous. The cat crouched even further into the ground. Now she was closer. Mandy could see that the cat's left ear was torn. Dark clots of dried blood were caked around the nasty wound. Mandy edged closer, but it was too close for the cat. Leaping up, it raced across the grass and scrambled clumsily through the far hedge. Oh, said Mandy, watching it go. James came over. Do you know who it belongs to? Mandy shook her head. I've never seen it before. An animal you don't know, said James, grinning. A miracle. Mandy didn't grin back. Her blue eyes looked rather worried. Did you see its ears? It was torn. I think it's a stray. It can't be a stray, James argued. It looked fat. It probably belongs to someone new in the village, he continued. That's why you haven't seen it before. But why did it run away like that? As they reached the road, Mandy looked in the direction the cat had gone. Oh no, James said, re recognizing the look on Mandy's face. You're not going after her. We're going to be late enough for school as it is. There was no sign of the little tabby cat. Rather reluctantly, Mandy picked up her bike and left. James's bike had survived the crash, the crash with only a few scrapes on the paintwork and a dent in the bell. They cycled off. James chatted away, but Mandy was quiet almost all the way. She was thinking about the cat. James was right. It had looked well fed. But if it belonged to someone, then why hadn't they done something about its ear, and why had it looked so nervous? For some reason, she couldn't get the picture of the little cat scrambling through the hedge out of her mind. Something bothered her. It wasn't just its torn ear or the nervous look in its eyes. It was something else. But try as she might, she couldn't figure out quite what. Mandy slowed down as she and James cycled back past the ward's house on their way home from school, her eyes sweeping across the neat yards and hedges. It's probably sitting safe and sound at home, said James, glancing at her. Mandy looked at him in surprise. He grinned. You were looking for the tabby cat, weren't you? Mandy returned the grin. James knew her so well, sometimes it was as, as though he could read her thoughts. But what if it hasn't got a home? If it was a stray, it would have been skinnier, James pointed out. Mandy nodded. But deep down, she still wasn't convinced. They cycled on until they reached the point in the village where they separated. See you tomorrow, she called. A few minutes later, she turned up the driveway that led to Animal Ark. The veterinary clinic was a modern extension at the back of the old stone cottage where the Hopes lived. Leaving her bike leaning against the clinic wall, 
Mandy went into the waiting room. Jean Knox, the animal arc receptionist, was sitting behind the desk. Her glasses dangled on a chain as she poked cautiously at the computer keyboard. How was school? she asked, looking up Mandy looking up as Mandy came in. Okay, Mandy replied. She frowned. Jean, do you know if anyone's moved into the village with a brown tabby cat? Jean shook her head and started tapping with one finger on the keyboard again. I haven't heard of anyone. Why? Mandy explained. It didn't look thin, but it had a torn ear and wouldn't come near me. Simon, the practical nurse, came out of one of the treatment rooms. He had been at Animal Arc since leaving college and was good friends with Mandy. She asked him the same question. He thought for a moment, but then shook his head. Can't help you, I'm afraid, he said, running a hand through his short blonde hair. Maybe your mom and dad will know. Where are they, Mandy asked Jean as Simon returned to the treatment room with some medical powder. Your mom's out on a farm visit, and your dad's with Mrs. Platt, Jean informed her. And Tanina's all right, isn't she? Mandy asked. She was very fond of Mrs. Platt's little gray poodle. Jean nodded. Just in for her kennel cough vaccination and some max some medicine. The clinic door opened, and in walked Bill Ward, carrying a wicker cat basket. Mandy hurried over. Hi, how's Delilah? The mailman smiled. She's grand, he said, putting down the basket on one of the seats. Jane told me about you and James this morning. He nodded. Thanks, dear. That's all right, said Mandy, as long as she's safe. Sounds interesting, said a deep, warm voice. Mandy swung around. Her father had come through from the treatment room with Mrs. Platt and was listening to the conversation. His mouth crinkled at the corners under his beard. What have you two been up to now? Mandy told him about the near accident that morning. Delilah just loves running across the road, Bill Ward said to Dr. Adam. Bring her in, said Dr. Adam with a smile. He looked at Mandy. Are you coming in too? Yes, please. Now that she was 12, Mandy was allowed to help with the animals that came into the clinic. She cleaned out the cages, helped with the medication, and assisted in the treatment room. It could be hard work, but she loved it. She took her white coat down off the peg and, buttoning it up, hurried to join her dad and Mr. Ward in the treatment room. Delilah was sitting on the rubber top table. Dr. Adam ran his hands gently over her bulging sides. Not long to go now, he said, looking up at Bill Ward. Have you gotten her a nesting box? Bill nodded, his green eyes serious. Just a cardboard box with a lid. It's already in the living room, and she's been going in and ripping up all the newspaper we put inside. He stroked Delilah's head and looked down fondly at her. We are looking forward to these kittens. Excellent, said Dr. Adam. He looked in Delilah's eyes and mouth and then parted the dense white hair on her back and inspected the skin. No sign of fleas, he said, but make sure you comb her daily. Can you please pass me the thermometer, Mandy? Mandy held Delilah while her father took Delilah's temperature and then listened to her heart. Yes, everything seems normal, he said. She's in fine condition, Bill. She should be, said Bill Ward. She's on four meals a day, best minced chicken, fish, and liver twice a week. We've got to keep up her strength. Carefully, he put Delilah back into her basket. Mandy helped him do up the straps. She wondered if he knew anything about the tabby cat in his yard. When James and I were at your house this morning, we saw another cat in your yard, she said. It was a tabby cat. Do you know if it belongs to anyone? Sure, I know the one you mean. I'm pretty sure she's a stray, Bill Ward said as Dr. Adam reached for the disinfectant spray and started to wipe down the table to make it ready for the next animal. I've caught sight of her a few times. Yesterday, I came out on my way to work and I found her lying under the cherry tree. Seeing her condition, I tried to catch her, but she was off like a shot as soon as I got near. Condition? You mean her ear? Mandy frowned. Yes, I was worried about that. Bill looked surprised. Ear? Her ears looked okay yesterday, he shook his head. No, I mean about her being pregnant. Pregnant, Mandy stared. Yes, as soon as I saw her, I could tell. She was like Delilah, licking her flanks with her belly, bulging in the same way. I'd recognize those signs anywhere at the moment. Mandy's blue eyes widened as she realized what had been bothering her. James said the cat looked fat, but the fat had all been to the side and underneath. She thought of the clumsy way the cat had pushed through the hedge. It wasn't well fed. It was pregnant. She turned anxiously to her father. Do you think she'll be all right? Dr. Adam scratched his beard. Cats normally have kittens without too much problem, but we should probably catch her and take her up to the an animal sanctuary. She may need feeding up and then there will be kittens who need homes. Bill Ward nodded. I put some food out after she ran off. She doesn't look like she's had much to eat recently. Mandy was very concerned. She knew that it got harder for female cats to hunt when they were pregnant. The poor thing was probably half starving. She remembered the way its big green eyes had stared at her. When can we go, Dad? 
I've got appointment for the rest of the day, Dr. Adam said, and then I'm on call. He turned to Bill. You said you usually see her in the morning? The other man nodded. Well, would it be all right if we came to your house to see if she's there? If she is, we can catch her and take her to the animal sanctuary. Of course, but it will have to be early, said Bill. I start my mail round at seven. So if we come about six o'clock, Dr. Adams suggested? I'll be there, said Bill. I wouldn't bet on your chances of catching her, though, he said, scratching his head. Not the way she ran off when I tried to get near. And that's the end of chapter one.